so let's talk about the transit networking. When it, it comes to connecting the native VPCs or VNet, the cloud providers will give you this VNet peering, but we discussed that this is not scalable, this is not manageable because now you are creating a full mesh. You have to create a full mesh because these VPCs are non-transitive. So you are in basically increasing the complexity yourself. Right? It's very difficult to manage even for the initial deployment. And just think about updating those routes on a regular basis or, or periodically. It's, it's not manageable at all, I'm telling you. And there is no network correctness. So if someone configures some route somewhere, uh, you don't have a clue what happened and why the network was broken or the routing was broken, right? So, so, so yes, it's very difficult, right? Uh, so, so what happens that these cloud providers, they're trying their best to provide you a transit solution. And um, in AWS case, um, they support native peering. Everyone supports native peering that's given. But for the transit, the proper transit, AWS has this AWS TGW. And um, they came out with this in last, uh, in late November, 2018. And you know, AWS has been there for a number of years, like 16, 17 years now, um, but it's not easy to do the transit, right? It's not easy to do the transit routing or the core routing. And that's why they were so late. Uh, and even with this AWS TGW, and the, there, there are problems with the visibility. You, you cannot log into this router. You cannot see the way you want to see it from the enterprise point of view, right? Um, you cannot even peer two DGWs in one region, right? It's a very flat architecture. When you connect VPCs, you configure out, everyone has started talking to each, each other. You don't want that, right? And actually I don't blame them for any of these because they have to provide this for a lot of thousands of customers. So they cannot provide you all those features, right? So, so that's the thing. In Azure, we saw that we have a number of options when it comes to transit solution. We have um, the options to do the transit using the Edge Router, Express Route Edge Router. Uh, you can use Azure Firewall, you can use Virtual WAN, but we know that everyone actually lacks in one way or another. GCP, they don't even have a transit yet, right? So they want you to use native peering. So they rely heavily on, on, uh, on us or vendors like us to provide this transit networking and then transit solution. OCI, same story. They don't have any solution for transit. So customers are using our transit gateways and then our spokes for, to, to create this, this transit network, right? So if you look at the non-Aviatic third-party transit solution, because obviously there are um, vendors like Cisco, they have Cisco CSR and they have uh, vendors like Palo Alto, that can actually tell you that yes, you can create the transit solution using uh, our our product. But yeah, but then you are uh, you're managing IPsec, you are managing all those things manually. You're logging into the Cisco CSR, for example. You're creating those IPsec tunnels and managing it. It's not it's not scalable. It's not manageable. And then beyond that, when you are creating those tunnels, because you have to create the tunnel to run the BGP. And when you create the tunnel, it's only 1.25 GB, right? So that's not enterprise grade. And uh, ECMP has issues, it's not supported on the native construct. Um, it's, it's, it's the size is, is not in your control, right? So they will dictate you the size because they are bringing the package with them from the on-prem world. Uh, the BGP management is your issue, right? Everything is just talking to everyone. There is no policy or security control. So it's a huge, blast radius they're creating, right? So a lot of time you are end up creating the scripting or Lambda scripts to do even the HA or automation for those third party provider. So now let's talk about the Aviatrix. So Aviatrix, when we started building our transit solution, we said we have to take an architecture approach because if the foundation is right, the building that you're building on top will be right, right? And when you're building even a simple house, you want to make sure that you are not in the flood zone. Uh, you are in uh, in a good neighborhood, go to school district, all that, right? So, so the architecture that you're building has to be centrally managed, should it provide robust connectivity, should be scalable, scale out. Uh, it should give you end-to-end -end network correctness. It should be encrypted because for example, AWS TGW does not provide you encryption, 
right? And that's, I think is the biggest reason a lot of customers, they don't like AWS DGW and they come to our architecture, our transit solution. Inserting the service into the flow is a pain, right? So you need to take care of all that. So this is exactly why Aviatrix is here and solving all those challenges. So this is a slide we saw before. This is how we actually build the slide. Now you have seen the icons, so it will make more sense to you. So in this space, we have this controller. This is the Aviatrix controller managing the, the interaction, building this is transit like in minutes, I, I would say, right? So it's just point and click. And if you're using Terraform, you're just clicking one, one, one button and then everything will be done. So yeah, so you create this transit in AWS and then you repeat it in Azure and then you repeat it in GCP. So it's so simple and so easy, right? And then when it comes to providing the visibility and monitoring, uh, there are options available within the platform, within the controller. But if you wanna go beyond, if you wanna provide extreme visibility, then um, we have uh, this icon which is called Copilot that actually can provide you information beyond what you can get through the NetFlow, through the APIs, through our own internal mechanisms. So I'll just give you one example here because this is important. And this is, this is what a lot of customers are using today, right? So BGP route approval, it's, a, it's very difficult when you're receiving a route from on-prem and it's coming into your AWS Transit Gateway, for example, or AWS um, uh, Aviatrix Transit Gateway. What if someone is sending you a wrong route, right? Let's say if there is a partner that is connecting to your uh, transit network and you trust the partner, but it's at the same time, you don't want him to inject, let's say default route into your network because it will break everything. So we have this feature, which actually allows you to control or approve a route that you receive from on-prem. Okay, so when the new route comes in, the email will go to the admin and then admin will approve the route and then it will be injected into the, into the system. So this is just one example of network correctness. And there are examples, a lot of examples like that. For example, um, TGW audit or AV transit gateway audit or um, to make sure that VPC, all the routes are in sync and whatnot. Okay, so I have this uh, link here. This is um, on the community site. Uh, if you search traffic engineering, if you go to community.avtx.com and search traffic engineer, engineering, I will show you all the different options we have available in the product for you to manipulate the route or do the traffic engineering for your routing domain. 